Welcome back to another KSP video, and today we are starting in the vehicle assembly building again because today we are going to be building one of the, if not the, ugliest, most terrible looking rockets ever conceived, and actually well, it did fly uh, multiple times. This is the Four Able rocket. Uh, I'll throw a picture up on screen right now what it actually looked like. Uh, yeah, it's a disaster. It's a complete disaster. Um, yeah, it's just a disaster. I don't know what else to say. Uh, so I'm building that right now. Um, uh, it, uh, I have way too much, the, the thing is too big relative to the fuel it needs, so I uh, just made most of it hollow that fairing because, you know, why not? Uh, it is a uh, Thor bottom stage, a Thor uh, missile booster thing, and then it has an able uh, second stage on top of it, um, <laughs> which is, uh, it just, that's why it creates such the weird shape. It's like kind of putting two things together and it doesn't really work. And uh, yeah, it also has a little payload fairing on top, which is puny, which will, you know, that's not fun to work with. Um, and uh, the actual thing had uh, 16 launches. Um, ten of them were successful. That means six of them, six of them were failed. And was it just six, you know, no one could look at it. It was so ugly, so they couldn't even they couldn't set up the launch. That's probably what happened, right? Uh, but this thing could deliver 120 kilograms to low Earth orbit, um, which is about a third the payload capacity of the Electron rocket it was made by Rocket Lab. So this thing was in real life really, really, really puny. Um, and um, the reason I have it as big as it is in uh, my KSP version, uh, just because I want, uh, just because it's the only really way you can get that scale right with the the tiny upper stage, because 1.25 meters are really the kind, basically the smallest part, except for like you know, use those tiny like Oscar B fuel tanks, but then you can't really do a fairing around it. Uh, so that's why it's a little oversized, but uh, yeah, right now we're building our little a payload, which is going to be a tiny little craft that we are going to send Bob uh, out to the Mun, and he is going to be visiting one of uh, the Easter eggs in KSP that actually I don't think a lot of people know about. Uh, that's why I decided to show up in this video, because I think uh, it's the uh, Neil Armstrong Memorial um, Memorial Easter Egg, which I think uh, it doesn't get enough love in KSP. Um, no one ever, I think Matt Lown did a video on it once, but I've not seen very many other videos. Uh, so, you know, like, everyone goes to the Monarch, everyone, you know, so I, I said, you know what, let's, let's show off the memorial. If you don't know what it is, uh, you'll, you'll see. It's basically an Easter egg that, uh, is a memorial to, um, to Neil Armstrong and, uh, basically the Apollo program and the lander, uh, that, uh, that landed on the moon in real life. Um, so that's gonna be the rocket completed in all of its ugliness so we can cross fade over to the launch. And, oh my gosh, we're gonna launch from the desert today, just, you know, why not, let's spruce things up a bit. Um... Yeah, oh, this is, this is, <laughs> Bob looks like he's having a good time, and there we go, very low TWR off the pad using the one vector engine, I don't know what happened, a little stutter there, but we are now in the air, and we are flying out to the MUN in the time lapse as the single vector engine, uh, the real rocket is powered by, by a, um, it's a weird engine, it's an LR-79-7. There are very little information on this engine, so I, I have like one picture. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of it. Shows to be vector just because really the only engine that had enough TWR. So as we continue to fly up now, I'm starting to slightly pitch over for about 10 kilometers by 10, 45 degrees by 10 kilometers. As we start to pitch over, you can start to see it develop a little bit of an oscillation. That's just SAS being SAS. So that's uh, yeah, we'll just enjoy the stupid looking rocket doing stupid things because you know what? That's what stupid rockets do, isn't it? Uh, this thing is so stupid. Whose idea was this? This is like it looks like a Q-tip, honestly, it or other you know less you know PG things. <laughs> um, jeez. Oh, this thing is ridiculous. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just can't stop thinking about how stupid it looks. But uh, the bottom stage is just about to uh, get fully depleted now, and we can finally get rid of it, and then we will fire up our second stage, and there it goes. Now we actually have a normal-looking rocket. And granted, it's tiny, but uh, yeah. The real uh, second stage is uh, the Able, what known as, and it has uh, powered by one uh, AJ-10 engine, and uh, it, it burned, it was a... Uh, uh, one of those like weird engines with um well it's a it, well, I can't even think guys it's the rocket is so stupid you it's just kind of ended my um ended my ended my brain on uh, a high hypergolic hypergolic fueled engine so not great uh, specific impulse uh, but uh, it gets us there we're using the swivel engine as the analog because it's like an inefficient kind of cheap engine and kind of look like the real one uh, so that was the plan or the theory behind that as we enter space and climb on up to our app waps and then we can reveal or pop open the fairing and reveal Bob in his little chair as he can 
can fly on out to the mun and visit visit the memorial. Isn't gonna be pretty exciting, right? Oh my gosh, so cool. Uh, the real rocket can only do one burn with its second stage, uh, but I'm instead gonna be doing like three or four, uh, actually maybe even five. A lot of burns, basically. Um, I'm gonna take this this stage is gonna get us out to our translunar injection. Then it's gonna circularize around the mun, and then it's gonna do deorbit burn around the mun, and then we'll land with the uh, with the with the tiny little stage he has on top of him it has about I believe 1,500 meters a second in delta v, uh, or actually about 20 2,300 actually. That's yeah, 2,300 meters a second in delta v. So not well, you'll see. Just stay tuned. Something something unexpected happens. <laughs> um, there was actually an optional third stage. Uh, on on this uh, rocket is like an orbital insertion solid rocket stage, um, but you know, we had so much fuel in this thing that it really didn't make sense to have the third stage because this thing is way overbuilt, and this thing's really like I said only supposed to bring like a tiny bit of payload to LKO, and, and it can actually bring it all that all this crap out to the moon. So that's quite interesting as we can just plan our deorbit burn to land at the uh, at the site. Um, if you if you want information about where it is, Matt Lowne's video has this great. Um, has a great uh, little picture thing that shows exactly where the memorial is, but you can see it's basically in this crater here. And if you like, really f like, look exactly at, I'll watch this video back and see where it is. But I I'd recommend just going looking at Matt Lon's video. So we are just going to detach uh, our our lander thing and fire up the Spark engine as the memorial can start to come into sight. You can see it's really tiny. I'm actually amazed I landed as accurately as as I did. And there it is. You can kind of get the general shape. You can see the little lunar lander on top of it right there. That is, that's, that's really cool. It's one of my favorite KSP Easter eggs. Uh, the, my favorite KSP Easter egg is personally the, the Kraken on Bop. I have a video about that. I'll put a, put a card up there if you want to watch it. But uh, this thing was really cool. You see the American flag and the lander. And there's a little plaque on the front. And I'm going here trying to land on the top of the lander. Um, it's really slippery. Uh, as you can see, I just kind of slide on off. Not generally uh, advised. Um, I keep trying for a while, so I'll, just, I'll show that on screen of me trying to land on it. While that's happening, um, guys, um, uh, I, told, I said about, I think a week ago, I, I made a goal to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of December. And that was originally after I'd made a goal to get 1,000 by the end of the year. And now I'm accelerating that goal because you guys are just that amazing. I keep getting all these subs for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but, like, I said, when I first made this goal, I said, like, a tw I think I said a 10% probability of happening. And now we're, like, over 50%. Like, guys, like, stop. <laughs> you guys are, you guys are too awesome. So I'd like to thank, thank everyone for subscribing and everyone who's at the Discord and every, you guys are all commenters and, like, you guys are all great. And I, I, I recognize most people, which is pretty cool. Like, I have quite a few regulars, so that's cool. Um, I would say everyone's name, but I think there are too many. And I'd probably end up forgetting someone and then they'll, you know... But, uh, yeah, you guys are great. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, if you're not subscribed, you know, feel free. Feel free. Um, just, you know, shameless plug, right? Um, you know, you know they, they do say, you know, if you just remind people, you get more subs. You know, at least I'm not. I've made that joke a thousand times about, like, the, oh, my gosh, guys, oh, my gosh, 30% of you aren't subscribed. Oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell, fidget spinner, enter my free gift card giveaway. Yeah. I've got, I've done, I've made that joke too many times. But there you go, just kind of bouncing our way uh, on to the surface. You can see the surface of that plaque right there. I'll get a better view in a second as I EVA a Bob out. And he's going to just have a look at the air. There it is, Neil Armstrong, 1930-2012. Not the highest resolution picture, but uh, here I just try and fly up with Bob to land, to see on the top if I can just manually land. Turns out it's even slippery for Kerbals, too. I try and take one step, and I just immediately slide off the side of it. And then we, and then I... <laughs> Plunk my head there, and plunk. Well, that's what its huge head is for, it's the cushion. So I'm just gonna fly up now and then we can get ready to depart the area and head back to Kerbin. Have that nice little heat shield he can uh, use for re-entry. And we can board up the command pod, get one last look at the memorial in all its glory, and we can now begin to fly on up. Here we go, just starting to fly flat now as we get close to orbit. And there is just about to set a wrap wrap. It's about 20 kilometers and we can get ready to do our orbital insertion burn around the moon and get ready to head back. And now I add my maneuver note and uh, would you look at the Delta V thing? I have like no Delta V left. Uh, it turns out I kind of, I hovered around the, the, the memorial for way too long and I 
you know, trying to land on the top of the lander and I wasted all of my Delta V. So I am completely out of fuel right now. So I get Bob out and I try and push. That's, that, that, you, that's, that seems like the logical thing to do, right? And then I'm like, oh crap, I can just like go back in here. I can detach uh, my fuel tank and I can just like push my heat shield. That's less mass, right? Much easier, right? So I do that, I detach and it kind of goes flying. And then, um, yeah, this, that, that goes about as, as well as you think it would. So, um, uh, we are going to do a rescue mission. All right, boosters, engines, go, 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 go. I'll try to make this quick for you guys because, oh, you're here for the ugly rocket, right? And you're now watching the normal rocket try and go rescue Pop with Jeb on it as we start our pitch over maneuver drop the SRBs. Our acceleration goes right down to nothing as we slowly try and pitch over. Use the 1.875 meter stuff that comes with the Making History DLC, because I never really use this, these size parts in the Gemini capsule, so I'm like, you know, why not? Let's do it. Uh, cool stuff, right? And that Bobcat engine, I believe is what it's called, is pretty cool on the bottom, too. So now we're just going to be a flying flat, basically, and accelerating ourselves to orbital velocity so we can head out to Bob. We need to get there as quickly as possible, because Bob is, you know, very, very bored. If only he had a copy of Raid Shadow. No, just not, 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 nope, not sponsored, not big enough. Um, honestly, even if Raid Shadow Legends did sponsor me, I probably wouldn't be into it because they, uh, they have, they have, they have reputations for not, you know, treating their, you know, creators well at all. And the game sucks, so, um, I've not gotten it, but I've heard people say it sucks, so this will actually be kind of, Kind of ironic if one day I end up getting, if Raid Shadow Legends approaches me, it's like, hey, can you sponsor, sponsor me? If, you know, if I ever get enough subs to even get sponsors. Um, I don't know what I would say to him, like, you know, like, what I would say to you guys, because this video would be out there of me talking about how trash they are. I'm like, oh, I like them now, right, guys? Buy their gate, buy the gold or whatever, their, you know, pay to win kind of thing. <sighs> These are the things I worry about. <laughs> Not, yeah, <laughs> I think about stupid stuff. Um, so now we're gonna cut up and do our orbital insertion burn around the moon for the second time so we can actually rendezvous with Bob and his heat shield and his chair and his structural panel. Uh, just gonna, for the interest of time, cut out the um, whole rendezvous thing, just gonna cut there because you guys are probably, probably only three of you are still watching because this, uh, this is such a mess, such a mess. Um, now I'm gonna EVA Bob and he's gonna fly on over to his command pod. Um, I have no idea where the door is. I'm like flying like, well, where's the door? Where, where'd it go? So I just have, I EVA Jeb and I'm like, oh, there's the door. So now Bob's gonna fly over and embark on the Gemini capsule and then it can get ready to plan the return burn and the two of them can finally get back to Kerbin. Bob has been there for a while, hasn't he? So now it's time warping to the maneuver node, pointing towards the maneuver node as, you know, one would do burning and then we are going to fly on back getting ready to detach the uh command module or the uh, capsule there it goes and face the heat shield in windward inward wind little words and then uh yeah we can just go ahead and deorbit and come in to land g-force is getting pretty high there pegged at 15 g's and then uh, we get through peak heating, I believe, and there's peak G's, and now we can just come in nice and gently to the surface of Kerbin. Coming through 8 kilometers now, coming through 7 kilometers, 6 kilometers, 5 kilometers, 4 kilometers. One would really think they should deploy their parachute right now. 3 kilometers, parachute still isn't deployed for some reason, 2 kilometers, there it goes, and that was sea level, not actual, above ground level height, I didn't realize that's our pop and parachute too late, and now they're all dead. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're all dead. And I didn't have a quick save, so I, um, thank you for watching. Um, put some cards up on the screen now, so thank you for watching. See you next time. Please write a comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time, and bye.